Uh, next up is Justin Hicks. Uh, he, Justin is a project manager with True North Marine, works exclusively with larger ongoing projects aboard customer vessels start to finish. He oversees the scope of the project through generating estimates to managing the marine technicians, installations, upgrades, and repairs. These include electronics, suite upgrades, engine overhauls, and everything in between. He came to True North with over 15 years of commercial marine experience. Thank you for coming, Justin. Oh, thank you. I'm also a 13-year U.S. Air Force veteran, and I'm also in my 15 years of working for Commercial Maritime has been with companies such as Wartzilla and Oceaneering. Um, and I think today we're going to talk to you guys about offshore engine preparation spares and underway repairs. So if you can go to the next slide. Hit the down button. Right uh, okay. I oh, thought somebody else was doing it. <laughs> there you go. Now look up there. Gotcha. Oh, okay. So what we're telling you guys is that your auxiliary engine can be a very important, so uh, important piece of equipment for your offshore safety. So we would like you to treat it as such, because in like emergency situations where you may need to dodge obstacles or get back to shore safely, uh, would be very important. And maneuvering in channels with large commercial traffic and also maybe charging your radios or uh, other safety equipment. Um, so things that we would like you to check now is your engine oil and filter, your transmission oil, your coolant, your impeller, and your full fuel filter. And then we would like for you to follow your long-term long uh, maintenance with your manufacturer. This is the event that uh, separates the real sailors from the people that just put the sail up as a prop, right? While she takes it. Fuel filters clog easily from the debris, but they're very easy to replace uh, underway. And clog filters are the most likely cause of engine problems. Uh, also, we recommend that you carry several spares of your primary fuel filters and secondary filter because the debris doesn't go away uh, just because you change the filter. We recommend a two micron primary filter. And we want you to ensure that you have the correct tools and equipment on board to perform filter changes, including an extra diesel in a sealed container to avoid bleeding system. These are some uh, photo examples of filters. Any questions? No. And these are some examples of uh, diesel fuel filter, uh, diesel fuel filter assemblies. So in case if you guys are going to change these offshore, maybe you know what they look like. Uh, some other common underway uh, problems could be impellers. So impellers are made of rubber and they need to remain flexible, but they can deteriorate over time, which shuts off the water flow to your engine. We recommend that you change them annually in our waters. And if you're in doubt prior to this race, replace it. Uh, carry a fresh replacement with the correct size and know where to find it. And we also recommend that you carry the tools necessary to replace when underway. And these are some photos of uh, impellers what they look like. Okay, so emergency spares that we recommend that you carry are uh, not limited to, but this is the minimum, is uh, accessory drive belts, engine coolant, distilled water, hose clamps, wire ties, and other hardware. 
and then plugs for your through hole failures and we recommend that you locate them next to the through hole so you can find them in a quick set of tools. If you want some recommendation on tools, you can reach out to us and we'll let you know what you need. And uh, so what we're saying here is that uh, combined periodic maintenance with, uh, uh, with your maintenance schedule is going to lead you to a path of success and make more reliability of your engine. So uh, make sure that everything's ready to go. Engine oil and a filter change, transmission oil, antifreeze and coolant, fuel filter replacement, seawater pump and impeller, anodes, heat exchanger, injectors, uh, mixing elbow, and uh, other specific maintenance things. And you can come see us if you want to, to help you out with that. And uh, here's some examples of fuel filter upgrades. Shameless plug, come see True North for any of these uh, any of these things and we can help you out with it. There's our contact information and Allie and I are in the back if you have any questions. That's it. Thank you. Inside presentation is by Tanya Corbin. Uh, she's French Canadian who learned racing in Australia 20 years ago. Uh, it's an interesting journey. Uh, but she's been in Houston the last 15 years. Her first harvest moon was last year with her daughter, who's in Sea Scouts. Uh, she's been a rigger with West Marine for the last two and a half years and been certified by New England Rope. And this year was put in charge of the rigging operation at West Marine Kiva. Thank you, Tom. Now might be the time to replace it before the race. 
Our selection runs from um, polyesters, they said, XL3, uh, et cetera. We have, it, it's basically the affordable, durable, multi-purposes for your sheets and hide. We also have Dynamon Core Double Braid and Dural Braid, more speed too. We do have a lot more selection. This one is for a lot of racers would use that. It's a low stretch and it's pretty light and doesn't retain much water, which we like that when we race. Um, Landon Core Double Braid, VPC, MLX, Viper. Uh, this is a, also a useful economical upgrade from stretchier polyester line for club racers. And these lines include many customized blend of fiber so that they are tailored for specific properties like low stretch to reduce weight. Uh, blended in polyester, single braid, uh, we have Buzz, Salsa, Regatta Light. So those are also sheets that we use to control. We do have a lot more selection, but just come to the store and stop at the rate shop and we'll be able to guide you through it. Uh, running rigging inspection. Okay, inspect all of your line. That includes shackle, blocks, shivs, uh, splices. So how to know when to replace it? Anything that looks cold, stiff, or chafed, just replace it, don't take the risk. It's not the time during the race to do that. Lubricate your blocks in your shackles and service your winches before you leave. Performing a routine maintenance on your winches is pretty easy. Uh, just go on our website and we do have a lot of information on our website that you can get. Uh, a lot of good videos, not just about winches, we have a block line and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, climbing your mask with a balsam chair. Okay. Maybe most of you know that we do not rely on the shackle or splice to climb a mess because that can fail. Snap shackles are subject to stress, corrosion, and can fail under load and suddenly spring open. So instead of risking to use it, just tie it all in a little bit higher than the splice. Uh, so because the shackle can to fatigue. Also, so always add a second line to secure yourself. It's better be safe than sorry. Uh, before the race, I know it might be difficult for some people, but it should be. All members of the crew should practice climbing the mess. So don't wait for an emergency to try to figure it out because the risk of the disaster. Not everybody can climb it, I know. <laughs> so, but it's good to try. Uh, lifeline inspection tips. Here we go. A corroded lifeline pose a hazard to you and your crew. So a lifeline with this much rust on the outer jacket of the vinyl, not the nile. Because I guess <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jim. And so the vinyl coated wire are a metal reward accident waiting to happen. So we mostly suggest uncoated 1x20 wire, 316 is the most common one and popular that we use often require of offshore racing boats. Although a little harder on the end, but it is easier to inspect for corrosion, so we can't see underneath that vinyl. <laughs> so, high dead rope lifeline made out of Dyneema, such as Samson, are a third option. Although it is light, and I have that question often, it's UV resistant, it's extremely strong, but it is not protected against chafe as in the steel wheel. And it doesn't last as long either. So also verify with your insurance company because some insurance company will not cover the Dynamo lifeline, so be careful. Uh, replacing the lifeline, if you determine that your lifelines need replacement and you want to use either traditional vinyl coated wire or cone coated, the easiest option is to drop your old lifeline to us at West Marine and we will duplicate them. So I suggest you to do it as soon as possible, not just right before the race, because sometimes we do not have all the fitting also. We have to order them. Sure you don't love everything, I guess. So. Now my son played with those and he was like, Mom, you need to have some animation. It's gonna be more fun. Standing rigging inspection tip. Okay, standing rigging, support your boat's mass. 
if your spending rate agency uh, is old and corroded, consider replacing it. Spending rate checklist. Use a flashlight inside the boat to check for the slightest sign of leaks at the chain plates. Are the chain plates properly aligned with the fairing buckles and stays and shrouds? Are there signs of leaking around chain plates? Any leak at all is dangerous for your rig. Are terminal fittings, switch fitting, free from cracks, bends, or rust? We don't want that to happen. That's not going to be fun. Are turnbuckle probably properly clean and lubricated so they turn freely? Are turnbuckle barrels secure with a tread with um, rings, cut pin, or a tight locked nuts? Is the standing rigging free from great broken wire strands? Uh, is the mast straight, not leaning either side or bowed in the middle? If the mast is stepped on deck, is the step properly supported down below? Are any screws or rivet missing from sails, tracks, or other fittings? So do weld on the mast and boom appears to be rusted. Are spreader ends secure to the shrouds? Are spreaders hands protected either with a rubber boots or tape? Are all cut and taped? Are mast head mount tight for radio antennas and wind indicators? So those are all things to check before the race. It's quite important. So here some stuff to have as extra gear that is pretty good to have is extra dot line. Even if you don't need extra dot line, maybe your neighbor needs extra dot line. And the fender, it is challenging down there. I think everybody, the one that's been there before, knows that you're going to put all the boats together and you're going to need a lot of fender. You're not going to want to have your neighbor rubbing on your boat. Uh, <laughs> big wire cutters. Okay, we don't expect anyone to have a mass failure. But if that happened in an emergency, you're going to need a big wire cutter because if you want something to release, that needs to be on your boat. So think about that, something that we don't always think of. It happened to me, my first race I did it was in Australia in a mass field. <laughs> so I know that. And I fell in love with sailing after that. Uh, Dyneema had a soft shackle nearby just in case, which I had to use it three times already. And I have always had one on my ankle. So, soft shackle, always good to have. Stay neat and organized. I think this is one of the most difficult things sometimes when we have a lot of sheets running around. Color code your line if you can. Maybe you know your line, but maybe your crew doesn't know. And if it's at night, let me tell you that all the whites, you're like, which one is what? I don't know. And if your crew doesn't know either, that's going to be fun. Okay, so come and visit us. Thank you so much. And uh, be safe and you're going to have fun. And again, my name is Tanya Cohen.